Good day, folks. Today, projectiles. Let's get it started. Okay, so we're going to be using an existing uh, sort of asset that the the uh, project already has in it. So we'll go ahead to is it VFX? Yes, and we'll be using Cog Bullet. Okay, let's select this cog bullet here and we're going to make an adjustment uh, from 100 pixels per unit and we're going to set that to 300. Okay, and then uh, you can play with that if you want to make it uh, smaller or bigger and let's apply that. Okay, from now, for, uh, from here, let's go ahead and just drag this into our, our hierarchy uh, right there and now we have uh, something that we can uh, sort of play with. We're going to add two components to this, a box collider and then a rigid body 2D. Um, in this case, th we'll be using these items to detect like if it hits something, as well as so we can sort of hit hook into like the physics engine. So let's go ahead and go to add component and we'll add rigid body 2D and then of course a box collider 2D. Uh, we'll keep the, um, the box collider for now, uh, keep with its default. Uh, but for the rigid body 2D, let's go ahead and set the gravity to zero uh, because we don't want the bullet dropping. We just want it to sort of uh, go through there. Okay. Uh, so we are good with that. And let's go ahead to our scripts folder and let's create a new script, C sharp script, uh, just called project tile. Okay. Um, the spelling of this is going to matter, uh, so make sure you're spelling projectile correctly. P-R-O-J-E-C-T-I-L-E. -E. Okay. Okay. Um, so we're going to be uh, associating this projectile script with our... Um, oh, let's also rename this prefab as well. We're going to call this prefab. Let's call this... Uh, we'll call this projectile as well. Okay, so see how we got that. And while we're here, let's go ahead and just click and drag this projectile script onto the projectile object. So we should just have a script that doesn't really have anything that we can play with at this point. Okay. Uh, so let's go ahead then, and uh, we are going to uh, do some scripting. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and open up that projectile script. All right, so uh, I'm gonna go full screen here a second. All right, all right, okay, get out of here. Hey, I don't care, get out of here, man. Okay, uh, let me just increase the size. Okay, cool. Okay, so we're gonna do some things. We're gonna first of all hook into on start. Uh, we're gonna set it up so that we're gonna hook into the physics system. Okay, so I just copied and pasted that. Um, we're gonna be making a rigid body uh, 2D uh, variable. Uh, that will, uh, sorry, on start, we'll be setting it up so that we'll uh, be grabbing the current physics uh, from our uh, rigid body 2D physics engine. Uh, we also, uh, below, let's just put here, we're going to need to create a variable, uh, a global variable across um, all of the, um, that, that's, that we can access from all of our different functions within this class. Let's just call this, it's going to be rigid body 2D. Uh, rigid body 2D. This is sort of old hat at this point, but we are basically creating, uh, we're setting aside some memory of, of the computer uh, to sort of like stand by and be ready to um, hold information about like the, the sort of physical information for this projectile. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and below this update, so make sure that we've got it below the, la the bracket for update, but before that last bracket, we're going to go ahead and we're going to be creating a function called launch. Okay, so now let's examine this. Um, public void launch. Okay, so public accessible by any other sort of uh, program or class or whatever in, in our game. Void, meaning it's not going to return anything, it's just going to do something. And then this is the name of the function, it's called launch. And what do you think launch is going to do? Launch is going to launch this projectile. Now, what parameters does it take? Like, what sort of information can you provide this function in order for it to do something? Uh, it's going to accept vector two, a vector two type uh, uh, that it's going to be called uh, the given the placeholder value, placeholder or like formal parameter of direction. So remember, vector vector uh, uh, vectors can accept an x and a y. Uh, value so it's basically the like when you call the launch function you can provide an x and a y 
And then uh, force is sort of, uh, it's going to be uh, of the type float. Uh, so you can, it can be like um, 22.3, you know, 333, three, three, whatever. Uh, so force is going to be like how much, uh, how forceful that is going to be. We then call upon that rigid body 2D, uh, and it's going to be given an ad, uh, a, um, give, going to be given the parameters that we pass to it as far as direction and force. Okay. So uh, the next thing we're going to do, uh, and this will be called, uh, we'll eventually be adding this to Ruby. We'll be having it so that when we press the C key, um, Ruby will launch a, um, a projectile and call this launch function. Okay, uh, so now the next thing we're going to do is create uh, just sort of for now like a primitive way to detect if it hits something. Uh, so let's go ahead below the bra that bracket for launch. Let's just add another one and uh, void col on collision enter 2D. And again, guys, the folks, it's case sensitive. So capital O, capital C, capital E, and then the D in 2D is capitalized, okay? Um, on collision enter collision 2D other. So basically if we, this is going to be with the, our box collider, our box collider senses that we have run into another game object. Okay, this is what is going to sort of, uh, at this point we're just using the, uh, the debugger. We're just going to have something come up in the console, but it's basically if, if you hit something, tell us in the logs. Okay, and then once you've detected that I've hit something, destroy. Destroy the game object. Okay, in this case the game object is going to be the projectile uh, that we have, um, uh, we've uh, sort of worked with. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. All right, we can now return uh, to Unity and we're going to actually go ahead and work with our, um, uh, with Ruby at this point, the Ruby script. So let's go to our Ruby controller script. Okay, let's go full screen here. Um, so we're going to be adding a new um, variable. It's going to be type public, okay? And it's going to basically be, I think, sort of interesting. Um, we're going to be able to accept another game object as a variable. Hmm, we just programmed a game object called projectile. So let's go ahead and just check out the syntax for that. Where am I as far as like where I'm putting this? It's right where I put, uh, starting at the kind of the class definition uh, up here. So right after the first bracket, okay? And I'm just going to set it up as, uh, was it public? I got to make sure this, I get this right because it's the first time I've used this variable type. It's sort of uh, interesting in, in my mind. Okay, uh, we're going to be just here we go. Um, so we're just going to call this public, uh, capital G, uh, game object, and then it's going to be uh, projectile prefab. Is that what we want? Let's make sure this is what, what I want. Might have to come back here and check it out, but let's, I think we should be okay. Let's make sure we got this. Okay, that's good, that's good. Yes, okay, good, that is correct. And this will basically be, we can go back to um, Unity in a little bit. But first, um, yeah, let's, let's write the launch function. Okay, so we'll go ahead and create a new function called launch. Where are we gonna put that? Um, we can put it like, I'm gonna do after change health. Okay, so for me, we look at the open of change health and then the close of change health. So for me, it's gonna be like line 87. It might differ for use, but basically put this before the final bracket. Okay, this is pretty big, ton of stuff here. And you might wanna just reference the uh, sort of written instructions at this point. I'm gonna now go ahead and discuss all the things that this does. Okay, and note that it goes off the screen. Okay, um, which actually I can sort of just set it up so that it's like visible. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. Okay, so we, we have a function called launch. Okay, now note too, we, it's not public. 
Um, so it's just going to be something that uh, uh, Ruby has the ability to do, um, which we're going to have it set up. Uh, eventually, it'll be called by the um, whenever we press the C key. But let's talk about what's going on here. So we say here that whenever the launch function is called, and this is pretty complicated stuff, but it's not horrible. Um, we're basically going to create a, a we're going to have a variable called projectile object of the game object type. Okay. And what, how will we define that? Okay. So we're going to uh, basically have whatever on, so remember when it comes to a equal sign, when it comes to C sharp um, and uh, like at least Ruby and Python, uh, those are two other programming languages. We're reading right, we're starting on the right and then we're, uh, and then we're assigning whatever happens on the right to this thing on the left. Okay, so basically there's going to be something called projectile object. And what is projectile object going to be? It's all the stuff on the right side of this equal sign. Okay, so now let's talk about the stuff on the right side of the equal sign. We're going to instantiate, okay, instantiate something that we've not encountered before. To in instantiate something is to create kind of like a, a new instance of. It's to basically say, um, I've looked at these instructions, I'm going to now create something um, based upon a certain set of specifications, and I'm going to kind of, I can create like any number of these things. So I'm going to instantiate a new object, a game object. Um, and I am going to use the following parameters. Projectile prefab, which we're uh, sort of in the process of uh, creating with our projectile CS as well as what we did in Unity. Uh, we're going to then give it a position. We're going to put it slightly, and where, where is this position coming from? It's coming from where Ruby is currently. We're going to set, like, so we're going to start off with Ruby's current position. We're going to set it a little bit away from us. And then I had to look this up and in the text instructions, it basically said like, it, they're like, don't worry about it. It just means no rotation. So I'm going to, I'm going to sort of parrot that for now. Uh, basically it's saying this, create a projectile, like a little bit offset from where Ruby is. All right. And that object we call projectile object. Once you've instantiated that object, we're going to go ahead and reference the projectile uh, that like a uh, uh, sort of um, uh, properties. We're going to assign it to the variable projectile, and then we're going to say projectile dot launch, and then we're going to give it. Uh, I believe look direction is is with root is something that Ruby is like currently looking at, and then three hundred. If we look over at our projectile dot cs. We go to launch. We see here that the direction is based upon, so this is now in projectile.cs. We see that direction is the first parameter that's accepted and then force is the second one. So if we go back to Ruby, we see launch something in the direction that Ruby is facing and give it a force of 300. And then we also then for on the Ruby side of things, uh, set the trigger of launch so that the animate, that the animation plays. So let's go ahead and save this. We're going to need to fix one thing in Unity. So I'm going to go ahead here. We need to add, create a prefab real quick. OK, um, let's now um, go ahead and just set this projectile. Let's put this in the prefabs folder. OK, and then let's also delete this from the hierarchy. Let's go ahead to the Ruby prefab. Scroll down, and you see here, there's that projectile prefab. I hope I didn't uh, accidentally put a space there. I should be OK. Um, but so now this is when, in our code, we created this variable right here, OK? This is what we, this is the, the, the sort of the impact of adding this line of code here on line 7 is now in the editor we have something that we can just sort of do some clicking and dragging with, um, and dragging and dropping. So we created this projectile. One thing you can do too, um, click on this lock button so that in case when you click on here, it, it, it normally would switch over. So just click um, when you're in the Ruby, when you had the Ruby prefab selected. Actually, let's make sure we have open pre, yeah, that's good. Um, just set that little lock there so that it's locked on Ruby. Okay, so where it says game object, Let's go ahead and drag and drop projectile. Okay. 
and now we can unlock and uh, let's just go back to the game. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, we need to add one more thing to Ruby. I forgot about her, her uh, the detection script uh, when we want to um, set something up, do this. So we gotta go back to Ruby. Okay, so that's rubycontroller.cs. Um, we had just added this launch uh, function uh, which would uh, go ahead and uh, launch, but now we need a way to have it set so that it knows to, um, to, to, to launch the launch function. So let's go ahead and find the update function. There we go. So for me, it's line 36. Okay. So now what we're going to do is let's go to where it says like, um, like a little bit right after is invincible. And let's look after, so this, uh, this bracket here is what ends the update function. So we basically want to check every time there's a frame update, we want to see, it, did the user press the letter C? So for me, it's going to be the, the last bracket uh, before the fixed update thing. So for me, it's line 60. Yours might be a little bit different. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just add this here. And this is if, and I'm going to clean this up a little bit. If input get key down key code C. If the user presses the letter C, call the function launch, which we defined. So let's save this and let's test it. And there should be uh, an error, which is supposed to happen. But let's see here a second. It should only come up when we um, call the when we call the launch function. Okay, so there's Ruby. So now we press the letter C, and you see it immediately kind of like. And we get a collision, but you see it kind of like instantly kind of despawns. That is OK. OK? What's happening is there's a you're as soon as you're launching it, there's a collision with Ruby. So that's good in a way. Um, I think there's also, yes, no reference exceptions. We'll discuss that in a moment. OK? So, but yes, so it seems like things are actually working. Good. OK. At this point, let's go ahead and we are going to um, uh, fix the problem. Okay. So the problem, first of all, is let's go to here to projectile.cs. Okay. The, again, the way to access that should just be you know you get your project, uh, you go to scripts, and then we're going to be working with projectile and Ruby controller. Okay. All right, for, so for projectile.cs, we have to change something, OK? So um, the first thing we got to do is set it up so that the, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, where it says on start, we want to change this to on a week, OK? So we're going to set this from, uh, so this is again in projectile.cs. For me, it's line 10. We're going to set this to capital W, uh, sorry, capital A, W, A, K, E. What that's going to do is, so start, and actually I can get rid of line 9. Um, start is going to be set up so that like when the game starts, you're going to, um, in, uh, to grab the current position of something. You're going to do something when the game starts. Well, when the game starts, there are no projectiles. You only get projectiles when you are launching them, OK? So we changed the start to awake in that we don't want anything related to the projectile class to happen until one actually exists. And when one, you can think of it like when you instantiate a projectile object, you're setting it, them up to be awake. So um, anyways, um, we are now going to fix. So actually, we're good with the code for now. So let's go ahead and fix the other thing about uh, setting it up so that Ruby like automatically collides with the projectile she's launching. So let's fix that up. So we are going to be adding layers. OK, so let's go to uh, our friend. Let's go to our prefabs here. And then let's go to Ruby. And the thing that we're going to be working with is going to be where it says layer. Let's change this. We're going to go here to add layer. 
And we're going to set here for layer 8. We're going to set call layer 8 character. Or do I want to do character first? Or, oh, let's do it so that it's, um, so that it is, yeah, layer 8 is going to be character, character, and then layer 9 is going to be projectiles. OK. We're going to now go back to Ruby and her layer. Let's set to character. Projectile, let's set to projectiles. Now, this is now at this point a, like, you haven't really changed anything because we've not changed how these layers interact with each other. The way we do that is we go to uh, uh, our project settings. So we go to, I don't want to have that. OK. We go here to uh, um, our project settings. Why it's not, is it build settings? Sorry, give me a second here. Sorry about that, I just blanked. Uh, it's edit project settings. Okay, so again, uh, we'd set up our layers, so now let's set how they're governed together. So we go to edit, uh, we go to project settings, and let's go ahead, I'm just gonna take this full screen. Um, it's gonna be layer collision matrix. So if you look at it, these are basically uh, some things that like, how do these interact with each other? I want you to go ahead and look at it like it's going to be this first column. And we want it so that projectiles and characters do not interact. All right. And now let's go ahead, can X out of that. Maybe just save it real quick and then let's test this. There we go. So we see that we've got all the things happening that's supposed to happen. When the object, and you can actually see it, like every time I press the C key, a projectile object has been instantiated. Um, and then also whenever it collides with something, it is, uh, like in this case, those are tiles, so they're not going to do this. Uh, but it is colliding with something. And you saw that if we look at our console, we see what it collides with. And when it collides with something, it automatically destroys itself. So pretty good stuff, folks. Pretty big lesson. But uh, I don't know. Uh, we created projectiles. So we did some physics. We did some really cool stuff. Uh, good stuff, folks. I wish you the best of luck. Awesome.